Finally, I want to return to this idea of storing energy. On the diagram over here, we have an apparatus depicted, which is just a simplified picture of what we're going to do over here. We see that there are two chambers separated by a piston. We can pump up either chamber to a high pressure. We pump up the bottom chamber first, the top chamber second. And the question we ask is what happens to the piston when we suddenly release the pressure in the bottom chamber? Now it's fairly obvious that the piston will come down. But will the piston come down or will it come down with a bit of a thud? If the latter is the case, we might be able to do some useful work. The easiest way to find the answer is to do the experiment. Now, over here we have the real apparatus. It is, in fact, no more complicated than that which was depicted in the simplified diagram. We just have a few struts to give it mechanical strength. So what we're going to do, we have here the, the bottom chamber, so remembering what we did before, we pump that up to a high pressure first. We pump away. Our apparatus, of course, is costly and sophisticated. We use a bicycle pump. We pump that up to a high pressure. We now take the top compartment. Now, we have stored quite a lot of energy in the top compartment, so that when I suddenly release the pressure in the bottom compartment, the piston is going to come down. Now, I won't put my finger underneath it, but you can see that the piston is going to be lowered onto that thing. There's one of them. It's a little metal slug, rather like a short, fat bullet. But what's it going to look like if we suddenly release the pressure? As one can see, it's uh, made rather a mess of it. Not only did it compress it, but it drove it down so hard into the bottom of the apparatus it was extremely difficult to remove. There's the before, there's the after. And there is a rather graphic indication of just how much energy we stored from a few strokes of a bicycle pump. You can indeed store energy, it's rather easy. Again, think of the potential consequences. That was Peter Towns talking about energy conversions. I'm going to talk about something different, about drinks. Most of you are familiar with drinking in the home your parents having friends, and they enjoy to have a drink together. Very often, you're left out. Well, I know what it's like. We do much the same thing at home. When we have friends round, the children get left out. But if they're very lucky, we often give them a little soft drink, something like a Tarax wild raspberry, perhaps they can enjoy that. Or if they're very lucky, maybe some solo lemonade. But once we've fixed up the children, in for it for mum and dad. Out with a bottle of claret, for example, which is very, very pleasant to have. But sometimes our friends don't drink and we give them a nice glass of water. After the children have been sent to bed, then it's the time to really enjoy oneself. But rather than waste all that good lemonade, we do what the man of Nazareth did. We take that leftover soft drink and we convert it into good wine to enjoy it. So we can all then enjoy a nice glass of claret, um, rosé. Well, after we've spent the whole evening drinking, we should think about going home sober. So why not take the leftover wine and convert that into something which is quite non-alcoholic, water. And then we can send everybody home nice and sober after they've had a nice glass of water. This is something I'd like you to remember when you go out drinking. Please try and remember, don't drink when you've been driving. Thanks Graham Rose for those most refreshing ideas. I've got a small balance here that I'd like you to have a look at. It's somewhat slightly different as you can see from the motion. And if I put two weights on it, 
like so, it balances as you would expect. What happens then if I was to take the weights out to about where they ought to be and take one of those off? Will the balance now stay balanced? Will it go up or will it go down? Well, let's try it. Oh, it seemed to do something wrong. Perhaps we should put both those weights back in together again, like so, and there it is balanced and it seems to stay put. What happens now if I put the two weights out and let it go? Does it again go up, down or stay put? It stays put. Strange. Even if I do that, it still stays put. If you want to know why, ask your teacher. Oh look, here's one of these funny looking suitcases we keep on seeing. Looks all right. What happens if I twist it and turn it a bit? Here it goes. Good heavens, it feels like it's a bit alive. Perhaps if I turn it round that way. Oh, or that way, it does that sort of thing. What say I go for a walk, see what happens. Around we go. Oh, that's all right, I can walk for days like this. Perhaps I want to go around, oh heavens, go around the other way. Help, help. Oh, let's say I put it on this turntable and see what happens there. Put it like that on the turntable. Oh, it's sitting there. Now, if I was to push it, now oh, it slides across the turntable. Perhaps I'd better push it the other way and see what happens. Oh, it's not going to work. Perhaps if I give it a twist. Good heavens. Perhaps we need to stand that up again and have another go. We'll stand it up this way this time and see what happens to it. If I push it over, like that, it sits there. Rather strange. Wonder why it's going around backwards. What's say if I push it the other way? Oh heavens, it came right off. I wonder what is inside this brute of a suitcase that seems to be alive. Let's have a look. Oh, a large wheel. Perhaps you'd better ask your teachers about gyroscopes. You should think about that. I have something behind my back here which requires just a little explanation. A glass tea piece with three taps and two balloons, one there, one there, both looking very limp. I propose to blow up these balloons one at a time. And I'm going to ask you to use your imaginations now to try to determine what will happen when I open both these taps Still one to go, and allow air to pass from one balloon to the other. Now you might care to think for a moment, decide which of three possibilities will occur. Perhaps the big balloon will be generous and share some of its superfluous air with the small one. Perhaps nothing will happen at all, which would be a little odd. The other alternative, of course, is that the small balloon will make a donation of air to the large balloon. And I won't keep you guessing any longer, we'll try it. Now, I think you all saw what happened. Just bear in mind that in this life, from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath, and given unto the fellow who has the most to start with. I think the taxation department knows something about that.